First of all, I want to answer Mr. Skindy's uh, request as to whether or not I believe in school safety wholeheartedly. I do. For those of you who wish to propose that a background check be given to all the board members here, you know what? I signed it. I signed the petition. And um, there is one thing I want to start out with, too, because I was told by, um, and I have to say this, uh, Mr. Hughes, and I was also told this earlier by someone who I, uh, I, I apologize for not naming, and it was mentioned by Aaron McKenna earlier. A lot of times in these board meetings, they get a little on the negative side. They do. And people get heated, and we kind of miss the boat just a little bit in terms of why any of us are meeting here. And what I want to do before I get to the meat of what I want to talk about and address the big elephant in the room and all that good stuff, I do want to say that I, I want to salute our students. I was looking online at various pages, including the Heartland Consolidated Schools uh, Facebook page and so on. One of the things that we don't do enough in these board meetings, and I think we're all guilty of it, we don't recognize all of the achievements that kids have made, not only in athletics, but in academics. I went through and I was making a list of all the accomplishments just in the last two weeks. And what I came up with, Heartland DECA, Advanced Marketing Students Qualifying for a, a Trip to Orlando. Heartland Bands were giving concerts in the high school. Boys Varsity Hockey Game against Brighton went three overtimes to make it to a, a big state final round. Just absolutely incredible. And that is that terrible podcast that I was a part of. <laughs> I want to talk about that, and I want to talk about that in detail. What was said? Well, there are plenty of transcripts and video on social media, and you know what? Mostly are correct. Even a lot of my detractors, the way they went through that transcript, I have to say, they did a good job. Now, whether or not they interpreted it correctly, I, that's another argument. But I will say, if you're not informed about the incident of that podcast where Greg Keller and myself um, were accused of making some really bad comments, check it out. Find it online. You will easily find it. Don't take my word for anything. Just take a look at it. Um, as far as what else was said, there was a uh, update letter sent out by Superintendent Hughes a letter on 3-1-23 that was not accurate. But I'm not going to get into that right now tonight. I am going to say that because I can assure you that there will be more on that in the near future. What also was said, a podcaster who I last checked has freedom of speech said an offensive word based on information from a report. And mind you, when I say report, I am not talking about rumor and innuendo. What a police report that documented over 17 injuries by one child at farms. Two of those victims were teachers. And I'm wondering how many of you actually know what happened and what transpired. This is a foible document. Anyone in this room can pick it up, can get it, can look at it can read the details. Okay? Now, what wasn't said? I heard some concerns tonight about, oh my, FERPA information is given out. I, I, I need to ask you something here. Uh, do you really, really feel that Harlan schools have things buttoned up so tight that the only way information can come out is through various sources, either internally or in the shadows or whatever, you can get a police report and you can FOIA it. It's real simple. Okay? Now I know you're asking, okay, well you were on this podcast, Glenn, 
and you mentioned this incident. So just, just where did you get that information from? Well, starting last April 2022, I made it clear and legally official that I was running as a candidate for school board. And oh boy, was I amazed at what happened when I made that proclamation. I had people coming out of the woodwork. I had people calling me. I had people writing me letters, emails, text messages over their frustration of things that were not handled in this school system. That's where I got my information from. I got them from FOIA police reports, letters, emails. The best, my favorite. Conversations at local events with teachers who have left the district either by choice of the district or by their own volition. Boy, that's a whole evening's worth of uh, stuff we could talk about there, but I'm going to move on. Talks with sheriff officers and county officials. Confidential board notifications I cannot share. The idea that anybody on a school board doesn't get information from a vast number of sources is beyond ignorant. And I'm going to say that loudly. Pardon me for the attitude, but in this FOIA police report, there's some things that I want everyone in this room to be aware of. There's a statement from school administration about an incident that happened back in September, September 23rd of 2022. I want to tell you one thing. This police report that I'm talking about, do you think it was uh, created on 9-23-2022? It was done the day after. Think about that for a bit. Just let that marinate. The day after. And we had students, we had teachers injured. Mm. Twelve children. And that's according to one of the administrators at that school. She stated that after the incident, there were approximately 12 other children that redacted so-and-so had punched or done physical harm to. She then stated there were several teachers that were struck and several chairs from the lunchroom she had to pick up after so-and-so threw them because he was angry. Now, there's statements from other personnel. Basically, some of the teachers and staff that were on, on site that day. This is all, by the way, and I, I want, want to stress this, in a foible police report. So-and-so was punched by so-and-so, those names are redacted, which led to medical treatment at a medical center and a workman's comp case generated by a teacher. Wow. Hello? We're not talking about a very emotional kid having a really bad day. Do you understand that? There were people injured, there were students injured, and the fact that this district hasn't been sued into oblivion by this one incident right. is amazing. Right. What's inappropriate? You. What's Are you inappropriate? kidding me? It's in here. He is inappropriate? Oh, really? No. Are you kidding me? You're saying that he is inappropriate when this is happening in this school district. Are you kidding me? Folks in the audience, I am going to have to ask that, that you refrain from interjecting during the board reports. Um, so, Pardon me? Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. That well, it's on court recording here. So it's being recorded. Uh, again, I, I, I ask that the audience please refrain from when word reports are being presented. Go ahead, Mr. Gogolaski. I also urge Thank Mr. You. Gogolaski, if you could... If you yeah, I'll, I'll tone it down a bit. No, no, I'm not saying that, but I would just hope and encourage you not to use any special or particular names of any... I will not use any names whatsoever. He hasn't used any names. 
even though there wasn't any mention of the police report, which I will not talk about. That's their problem. And uh, after that, um, here's, here's the big thing. This instructor, that, that this statement from the personnel, the person that was injured, she told the, the reporting officer that not a single school official had talked to her prior to me seeking her out to get a statement well after the fact. Wow. It should be noted that Redacted is extremely concerned that the school, and this is in the report, the school's administration to include those at the central office retaliating against her. She did not want to be the only adult on record as her written and signed statement reads. There's more statements from personnel. This is in the report by the officer. All teachers, and this is what he said, all teachers that I talk with are afraid of retaliation by central office administrators. It is in the police report. It's also stated that redacted teacher, redacted was assaulted during this incident, but has stated she will not give any further statements because she does not want to press charges at this time. And now, there's a little excerpt that was actually read earlier by somebody that came up here. And I just want to uh, real quickly uh, bring up some of these key points. There's an excerpt from a teacher recounting some events. And she writes, Blank was screaming profanities and telling that he was going to kill him. He screamed this over and over, calling people MFers and all sorts of things. This teacher, um, I got, th this is incredible. This is why I could never be a teacher. I said that, you know that? This teacher went above and beyond to protect her students. Man, why she doesn't get a medal, I don't get it. Get a load of this. They were fearful, the students were fearful of what was happening. Although the redacted student, the student in question, kept approaching us and threatening specifically I kept reminding so-and-so, a, a student, another student that was terrified, that I would not allow so-and-so to touch him. I had him securely under my arm and kept turning my back to see when so-and-so, if he would try and come at us. At one point, I was hit in the left shoulder. I don't know if it was intentional to hit me or if he was going for a student, but I made sure I was blocking his way to so-and-so. Man! I'll tell you. Hmm. Along with that, this teacher told a small group of kids that were near me to go inside our classroom and shut the door. I wanted them as far away from so-and-so as possible. And then later on in the statement, she also writes, it was then that my students went to uh, so-and-so's classroom. It is connected by an interior door because they were scared. After we were told it was safe to enter, we all went to our classrooms. I had two students say that they were hit and they were crying. I wanted to be told what to do next and didn't get any direction from the remaining part of that hour. So while we're so outraged over some random person with, an, with a podcast that said a really ignorant term, all of this was going down, and I'm wondering how many of you knew about it. Really am. And now, now, it gets good. Statements from parents of the student victims. All parents of the victims, students that I talked with, 
are genuinely concerned that their children will be retaliated against by or by the school administration or central office. These are parents. So if you sometimes wonder why parents come up to this podium a little less than happy, these are some of the reasons why. Okay? Another statement. This is from a parent about their child. He had been choked in a headlock to the point of gasping for air the prior year by the same student. At this point, this parent felt as though they were not going to get any help from our board, and that's the board that was in place in September of 2022, and that I would need to seek my own legal representation. Um, I really, really encourage you to get some of these documents and read them. Because I will tell you, I will not sit up here at this podium and pretend that everything is rainbows and unicorns. I will not do that. The safety of our children. 